Five Nights at Wario's has so many fan games out there, some good and some, not so good, and I've actually made a video of my top 10 favorite of them before, but it aged like absolute garbage, so I think I should remake it to celebrate my uploading anniversary, so yeah, here are my top 10 favorite Five Nights at Wario's fan games ever, but now it's actually good this time. Okay let's begin from the top. Five Nights at Wario's The Twisted Factory is a very unique game. You are an investigator trying to figure out what is going on at a weird factory. Due to the inconsistency of the rooms in the factory it was called The Twisted Factory. You also have your friend with you who's doing some extra work to research the place too. He also serves as the phone guy here. You also get to play as him in the 2.0 update but we will get to that later. That's the story so now let's discuss gameplay. So in this game you don't have all of the cameras to your disposal. Rather you can pick 4 cameras and 3 motion detectors for your tablet. You need to pick your rooms wisely as some are more important than others. This adds a tad bit of strategy which is really nice. You have an ultrasound machine you can use to stop Wario and Peach. Along with a flashlight to stop other entities. Either by shining it or using it as a flashbang machine. This game is pretty easy thankfully so you don't need too much skill to play it. This game is also pretty well balanced too. This game also has a second mode which is a reimagining of Five Nights at Wario's 4. Unfortunately it isn't that balanced. Especially in max mode. But the fifth night is an absolute blast to play and it was hands down my favorite part of the game. This game has a great story with an amazing main mode that is super fun and fair along with a pretty decent side mode. Because of that this is one of the best and most unique Five Nights at Wario's games ever. Five Nights at Wario's Return to the Factory is probably the most known fan made Five Nights at Wario's game besides its sequel. Now at base level it may just look like a clone of the first game with the same lore and new mechanics. And well, you're basically correct. But the game is still really fun anyway. The visuals are alright here and it helps this game stand out from the original. This game is just basically the definitive way to play Five Nights at Wario's 1. Well before Deluxe comes out at least. But there is one thing I love about this game. It is extremely difficult. So difficult in fact that the game got nerfed in the 2.0 update. But I think max mode was kept the same though. Also before we move on to the second mode I should say that I actually managed to beat max mode for my second time ever when getting footage for this video. You are actually watching the winning run now. But I unfortunately stopped recording halfway through the run though so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. But anyway let's get back on topic. WarioWare Intrusion is this game's second mode and I just have to say holy crap this mode looks visually amazing. The lighting and shininess makes everything look gorgeous. The gameplay here is way easier than the main mode but it still is somewhat challenging. Yet again this is just the definitive way to play Five Nights at Wario's 2 before Deluxe comes out. In summary this game does an amazing job at recreating the first two Five Nights at Wario's games and it earned its spot here because of that. Those Nights at Wario's The Cursed Factory is a reimagining of Five Nights at Wario's 1. The lore is the exact same besides the fact that James knows what's going on with the spirits and Yoshi is here. In this game you can look in 7 areas. In front of you, to your left, to your right, behind you, underneath you, above you, and you can also go to a back room. You see you need to use your flashlight if anyone is at your doors, or the vent. You can also hide under the desk to prevent Yoshi from seeing you. You can also use the machines of the factory to stop Peach from getting in your vent and raising your exposure really quickly. This is actually really cool because the machines were always a huge part of the calls in the original game but they never got used. So seeing them used here is super cool. This game's visuals are also pretty good too as you're basically in a super dark and empty room with your only source of light being your computer and the light coming from the back room. It's very simple but very effective. 
Also for once Mario is actually a threat as he finally doesn't take 7 trillion years to kill you when he appears. Like in every Wario's game when he appears in your room he gives you forever to pull up your camera. So seeing a game that actually makes Mario a threat is refreshing. Yes that Mario. This game has a second mode but I don't think it's good enough to be discussed in this video. In conclusion this game is very fun and creative while having a nice atmosphere to go along with it. This is a perfect reimagining of the original game so it definitely earns a spot on this list. Five Nights at Wario Switched in Time is an absolute blast to play from beginning to end. This game just has so much content and replayability. The achievements are all fun to get and there is actually a secret night you can play for an achievement. This game's main mode is a remake of Five Nights at Wario 3. And holy crap these are hands down my favorite rooms in any Five Nights at Wario's game, ever. They are all so unique and creative. The nights are really fast in this game so you won't just be waiting around for something to happen in this game. This game absolutely nails its GUI and lighting making the game feel super unique. This game also redesigns all of the characters along with adding some completely new ones. Ashley also got replaced by Daisy in this game and I just think Daisy is just a better character than Ashley in general so I'm glad she is here. Also once you hit night 2 you get access to all of the rooms in the game allowing for super personalized playthroughs. I would say this game lands on the easy side though, but that's not all. In the 2.0 update timeline shuffle mode was added and its sequel was added in the 3.0 update. In part 1 you can choose a character and then they will be added to your night. Every night a new character will join making the game more and more difficult. In night 6 everyone is added making the game very difficult but still really fair. Part 2 is kind of like final days from 5 shows at Wario's. You are going against the viruses with limited power while you have an entrance from the left and right and a big entrance in the middle. Sound familiar? While the main nights aren't hard at all the custom night had some new characters making the mode pretty challenging but still pretty fun. While I wouldn't say it's as good as final days it's still pretty good. But hey timeline shuffle part 2 added Bruno lock trap so that's an absolute win. But yeah, this is a very fun game that is super replayable while having lots of bonus content to keep you coming back. Because of that this game earned its place here. Six Nights at Wario's Left Behind is one of the most popular fan-made Five Nights at Wario's games and for good reason. This game's polish is really amazing. The visuals here are absolutely gorgeous along with the lighting. The models here are very good too. Wario, Waluigi, and Luigi keep their original designs but everyone else has amazing new designs. They even managed to get WWW Wario to voice act in this game too. They managed to get lots of other popular Five Nights at Wario's community members to voice act in this game. Like Jebushi, Dryan Infina, and the next genius. All the voice actors do a pretty good job here and it's nice to see so many recognizable people acting in this game. In this game you can cook I mean make potions to stop the spirits because apparently you're Walter White in this game. You can also spray pipes in the machinery to stop Luigi from getting in because there is no green potion. For Peach you just need to lock the window 4 times and she'll leave. This game also has lots of bonus content along with the 5 shows at Wario's inspired extras menu which looks really cool. This game even has custom night exclusives along with a final boss night. Now this game may sound perfect so you may be wondering why it isn't higher. Well you see this game has one major flaw in it. It's balancing. Sometimes the pipes will go off giving you a very short amount of time to fix them so you basically have to stop doing whatever you're doing and work on them or it's an instant game over. The characters also kill you really quickly in this game and most of them don't have a sound cue. In order to spray Luigi you need to be at a certain temperature and it takes a while to change it. It can go from the requirements of 30 degrees celsius to 115 degrees celsius. And that number can change to any number at any time. 
meaning the requirements could change to the highest temperature from the lowest temperature right as Luigi enters while others are in your room which could lead to a super cheap death. Virus Luigi can also take forever to stop if you need to fix the cameras. Dr. Mario especially kills you super quickly. If the pipes were to go off with like 3 characters attacking you you're basically dead. If you want more examples of this you should watch Pirate Stringer streams of him trying to beat the max mode. While well, yes a lot of the deaths were his fault. A whole other bunch were just plain cheap. If the balancing in this game were to be fixed I'd rank it higher but for now it's gonna stay here. But with that aside this game is an absolute blast to play and I heavily recommend it if you don't mind having some cheap deaths. Five Nights at Wario's The Clock is a very fun game with 30 nights. That's right you heard me correctly. 30. Entire. Full. Length. Nights. But every night plays a little differently from each other and every 10 nights there is a huge change in gameplay. Because of that this game will never get dry due to it changing more and more as the game goes on. The 30 nights have been split in 3 groups. Future. Origins. And Present. So let's discuss all 3 of them. In future mode you can move around the house using the arrows. You can also check and knock the doors to lure the spirits around. You also have the ability to use things in the house to hide. Either if it's hiding under the bed, hiding in a sweater cabinet, or even hiding behind some window curtains. You have to use all of these stealth like mechanics to avoid Wario as not utilizing a single one of them will make things super difficult. You also need to keep two music box type things charged. A generator and, well, a music box. Because suddenly we are playing the return to Freddy's 2. But unlike most Five Nights at Freddy's fan games the music box actually works here. You see they are located on the opposite corners of the house and because of that you'll always have to be moving and strategizing. For once a fan game actually uses the music box in a way to keep the gameplay going rather than a thing they add because they are out of original ideas. On other nights Wario may want to play hide and seek so you will just have to check every room and click on him once you find him. Sometimes he may just be in a room so you'll have to click him multiple times. While Luigi, Luigi, and Mario all have smaller mechanics they swap through to prevent you from winning but Wario is usually the biggest threat. The power will also go out on night 7, 8, and 9 to help every new night feel fresh and I thought that was a smart decision. Oh god we have been here for a while and we have only discussed the first 10 nights and we still have 20 to go. Man this is gonna be a long one. Now let's discuss nights 11 through 20 in origins mode. So you now can move with the map rather than arrows which makes moving a lot simpler and a lot faster. You are also given a camera system to store your foes. The phone guy seems pretty nice and tries to help you but he really starts to lose his patience with you around night 18. Wario will move in a simple circle pattern so just keep on running. Mario will infect the cameras so just stare at him. Waluigi will appear in front of you removing your ability to move unless you eat a ghost mushroom. And Luigi will appear in a random room and you will have to find and click him. This mode can be a bit luck based if Luigi spawns into a room that Wario is about to enter. As you won't have enough time to stop Luigi or Wario will get you or you take too long waiting for Wario to leave and Luigi kills you. But besides that the rest of the balancing for the entire game is good. On night 15 there are a lot of changes. Everybody works differently now. Different things are in the cabinet. The safety meter is gone. The generator never goes down anymore meaning you only have to worry about the music box. And finally you can now use the cameras in every room. Now here is the new AI. Wario will now follow you but he goes really slow now. But you can use the alarm to make him move instantly but it has a cooldown. Waluigi will appear on your screen and you just need to click on him. Mario will try to crush you with his hand so play the music box to send him back. And Luigi works the same but now you need to get a flashlight first making him even more luck based to deal with as now you have to worry about two rooms. Unless he is in the kitchen of course. And now we finally have nights 21 through 30 in present mode. Oh god this is taking forever. This plays like the exit in 5 shows at Wario's but it doesn't end until every single room in the house is open. 
Instead of there being 4 characters here there is now 8 characters making this basically the hardest mode. Not only that but you are now using the arrow movement again from the first mode but now the names aren't listed so I hope you remember which arrow led to which or you're screwed. I'm just going to do a quick lightning round of every character. You need to stare at Wario with night vision to stop him while manually charging the pad. You need to change the music on the radio with the remote when possessed Mario's music is playing. You need to click the ingredient in the cabinet that corresponds with the one on the table for Waluigi you need to flash possessed Luigi with X on your keyboard or he will fully static your screen. You need to flash Mario with X on your keyboard when you hear his running. You need to charge the generator for possessed Wario you need to hide under the bed when Luigi is on top of it to stop him. And finally you need to shock possessed Waluigi when he is in your closet. Night 29 and 30 all play completely differently and don't have free roam in them but I am not going to spoil them for you. Holy crap that took forever. This is an extremely long marathon of a game but it remains fun the entire way by changing things up constantly giving a super fun a memorable experience not to forget. Now let's finally move on. Those Nights at Wario's 3 Infinite Cycle used to be my favorite 5 Nights at Wario's fan game ever but that has changed as you can obviously tell. Now this game's main mode is just another Wario's 3 clone. And you see this game has the most rooms in any Wario's game ever with an insane count of 18 rooms. And for the most part all of the rooms are really good. This game has my second favorite collection of rooms in any Wario's 3 type game ever. But there are more rooms here than switched in time so it just adds up. This is a pretty good recreation of the original game but that's not it. But before I move on I should mention that you don't actually play as Edward Coleman in this game rather you play as Link. You know, that funny green guy from the Legend of Zelda. It's is a really interesting idea but to be fully honest I'd rather prefer it if you would play as Edward Coleman though. But anyway let's move on to the second mode. Now you see this mode is actually really controversial actually. Why you may ask, you see there is one big thing about this mode, it, is, very, difficult. This mode will kick you in your face and shove you into the rain and then it will proceed to spit in your face. Okay I was exaggerating a bit but still. So you see in the main night sever character who is active is always on 20 from beginning to end. Even on night 1 everyone who is active is on 20. But like 2 characters are on 15 just so max mode can exist. Also when the lights go dark in this mode virus Asli can spawn and she has a 5 nights at candy's 3 light mechanic where you need to shine your light in her face and she'll move her head. But she can insta kill you at any second if you have bad RNG and that is garbage. But with all of the flaws that make people hate this mode aside, I love this mode. This mode's challenge is a good thing in my eyes as most Wario's games with the exception of the abandoned factory one are just too easy. So finally getting a challenge is very nice. I also love how they took the 2018 mode gameplay from Origins and really expanded on it. Such as adding new characters and adding a lot more strategies too. The room images used for this mode is also perfect. It's also really cool that this mode was foreshadowed in Night 5 of Standard Mode. The visuals, gameplay, character designs. And difficulty all make this mode an absolute blast for me to play and I really wish people didn't hate it as much as they do. But we are not done yet though. This game also features a daytime quest. It has your traditional stuff such as getting money and food to survive and stuff. This mode also plays like the Legend of Zelda a bit with a boss battle at the end where you get to actually use your sword. It does a good job replicating the Zelda games, I think. I don't know I've never played Zelda. But anyway the daytime quest has one huge thing that makes me love it. The AI generation. You see every hour the AI of every character is randomized from 0 to 20. And the odds are rigged to get higher numbers every night. I think this is a genius mechanic as it allows for different strategies to be used every hour. McDonald's 3 butchered this mechanic as the AI changed every 10 seconds then every hour removing all possible strategizing. It's for the better that McDonald's 3 doesn't have a daytime quest anymore. But in conclusion those nights at Wario's 3 Infinite Cycle is an amazing game with 3 modes which are all good. I absolutely adore this game and I recommend this game to anyone. Especially Zelda fans I guess. 
But now I think it's time to move on. Five Nights at Wario's The Return Deluxe is probably one of the most polished Five Nights at Wario's games ever. The visuals, lighting, sound design, and GUI are all absolutely amazing and it really gives this game its own personality. Like holy crap the second mode in this game especially is visually amazing but we will get to that later. You see the original game was alright. The game wasn't bad for say but it was really forgettable. The mechanics weren't that creative and the visuals were not that good. They weren't as bad as rebooted for say but they still weren't good. But when the deluxe version came out everything changed. Standard mode is a remake of the original game with better graphics and new mechanics. So let's first discuss the mechanics for the remake. While Luigi works the same and is just a bland door character. Wario is also the same and he goes into the vent so you need to seal it on your cameras. He is basically a door character with a new coat of paint. Besides those two everyone else got completely new mechanics. Luigi is no longer just a music box and now you have to shine your light on him when he is in the back room when you hear him. Peach works like she does in RTTF1 where you need to find her on the cameras when you hear her. Mario is somewhat a threat in this game. Because instead of having to pull up your cameras you have to hide in the back room for a while giving other characters a straight shot at you. But Mario still gives you literally forever to hide those so you won't be dying to him anytime soon. Like I had the time to pull up my cameras twice when he got in and I was still able to hide in time. But at least Mario is slightly harder I guess. Yes that Mario. <laughs> In summary this is a pretty sweet remake of the original game that is short and sweet. But you see there is more. The deluxe version didn't only just remake the original game but it also added a completely new mode. Horror Nights. But only 50% of the name is correct as you actually will cycle through day and night segments every time you finish one. This builds up to a 10 night long game. So let's discuss it. The day segments are basically a remake of 5 nights at Wario's origins. Wario. Waluigi, and Mario all basically work the same with some slight changes to their AI such as you being able to push Mario back. Wario can now leave even when you aren't invisible. Or the fact the Waluigi can just camp in rooms. One of which being your office making the day segments a bit luck based as you need to stall Mario a lot and I mean a lot. Anyway you need to stare at Luigi when you hear him and you need to send Peach back by spam clicking the closet. The day segments balancing is probably the worst part about it but besides that it is really fun. Also the visuals are at its absolute best here. Like the game already looked good but when the improved custom nights and better visuals update came out these segments turned into eye candy. The lighting here is absolutely perfect and it is one of the best looking atmospheres in any 5 nights at Wario's game ever. But not only are there day segments but there are also night segments. Obviously. Now welcome to the ultimate mix of 5 nights at Wario's 1, 2 and 3. This mode has the doors from 1. It has the back room, generator, lightning, and tool storage from 2. And the pills and camera battery from 3. The knight has the most characters in the entire game and a lot of their mechanics are from the original games. But there are some new mechanics every here and there. This is an absolutely amazing mix up of the original trilogy and I love the knights because of it. This mode has you constantly switching between day and night so things never get dull. This mode is an absolute masterpiece and it alone is enough to earn a spot on the list but no. Not only do we get that but we also get an amazing first mode too. This game has so much to do with two amazing modes along with lots of bonus content and not only that but this game is super beautiful visual wise and with all of that in mind it earned its spot on this list. Five Nights at Wario's Rise of the Corruption is just an absolute masterpiece. And before I start discussing this I should mention that this game was made in Scratch. Yes you heard me. Scratch. It is absolutely unbelievable as almost any game made in Scratch is usually an absolute disaster and yet we are still able to get games like this. 
The Twisted Factory and the clock were also made in scratch which is also unbelievable. But now let's finally discuss this game. There are 3 modes so as usual let's start with the first one and work our way up to the last one. The first mode is the Warp Universe. And I've actually already discussed this mode before so I'll make it brief. This is a remake of Five Nights at Wario 3 yet again but this is a very good one. This game probably has some of the most unique and creative rooms ever. But not only that but this mode has a custom night built into it. You see everyone is always at 1 but you need to increase the AI enough to the point where the game says you can start. Later the night is how you have to set everyone. This makes this game really personalized and strategy based and I love it because of that. Also in the original 5 nights at Wario 3 there were splitting paths depending on the rooms you would choose but they always led to the same result. But in this game depending on the route you take it will lead you to a different final night. There are a total of 4 different final nights in this mode. Also when you beat a room a black portal will appear on the top of the screen allowing you to skip the night. This makes replaying the game amazing as you don't have to play lots of stuff just to play one room. This is still one of the best remakes of 5 Nights at Wario 3 and it gives off a perfect first impression for the rest of the game. So now let's move on to this game's second mode, Time Universe. In this mode you need to traverse through a destroyed version of the house from 5 Nights at Wario's The Clock while switching between the normal and inverted dimensions of the house. You play as the Origins mode phone guy from The Clock. Now there are a total of 8 characters here. Bowser, Toad, Yoshi, and Peach are all of the characters and they all also have inverted versions of themselves too. You need to survive to 100am to win. I will now explain the mechanics of the characters. For Bowser you need to click on him multiple times when he is at your window and for his inverted version you just need to play the music box when he stops making a bunch of noise. For Peach you need to find some scissors when she spawns and she is basically just a music box for her inverted form as you just have to wind up the rope. Toad will spawn mushrooms in the dining room and you'll need to use the spray to get rid of them but you must get rid of them in their spawn order. For Toad's inverted version he'll have lots of mushrooms around the house and if one goes missing you'll have to use the spray in that room by holding S you can thankfully use the tablets to easily track the missing mushroom easily. Yoshi will breach a room and you'll have to mash space to fight him back when you enter that room and for his inverted version you simply need to move to a different room as he will prevent you from swapping dimensions. This mode is really fun and I also think it is pretty well balanced too. But Night 5 changes everything. You need to go against Entity Mario and do what the game tells you to do. This comes out of nowhere and I actually quite love the final night to be honest. While I may not enjoy this mode as much as the first one I still love it. Now finally we have the Chaos Universe. In this mode you need to do multiple of trials that all play differently to escape your purgatory. You play as the one and only Bruno Gate in this mode. This mode has a free roam over world too. There are 5 different locations you can go to here and they each have their own trials. The servants who make you do the trials are actually just 5 nights at Wario's users which I find charming and funny at the same time. This mode is probably my least favorite of the 3 but I still heavily love it. In conclusion this is one of the best 5 nights at Wario's fan games ever made and it is an absolute blast from beginning to end. This game has lots of content and it is extremely charming. This game is a masterpiece that only one game has beaten so let's move on to it. Five Shows at Lugig 5s is such an amazing game. This game is basically a mod of Five Shows at Wario's that changes the game enough to the point where it's basically its own game. So let's discuss this game. The theater actually hasn't changed much. The shows are mostly the same with a few tweaks. This version is actually quite harder than the original game due to the rewards being way smaller. The shop is way more expensive, and the win streak is just completely absent. This actually forces you to play the game a bit and that is actually a really good design choice. But while everything is mostly the same the final show is actually quite different. 
the layout and physics are completely new and the visuals had a complete redo. This version is actually more balanced than the original due to the game giving you an actual warning for the spikes and the patterns for the obstacles in general are a lot more consistent. This is way better than the original game just due to the balancing alone. Now you may have noticed that this game has a lot of memes. This game is basically a joke game more than a horror game now to be honest. I love humor if you couldn't tell already. This game is also just way more visually pleasing to look at than the original game too. The exit is hands down the most visually pleasing mode to look at in the game. Like just look at this. It is absolutely gorgeous. The gameplay for the exit is basically the exact same besides some very small changes. Also Pipe Bomb Day replaces Nightmare Day 2 and I actually prefer it this way. Pipe Bomb Day is a 10 minute long night where you have to defuse pipe bombs and throw as much chili in the bowl as possible. Every room is unlocked but thankfully the AI is extremely nerfed. Final Days is Plants vs Zombies if it was FNAF. You need to collect suns to buy the trophy to win. Most of the characters work the same besides two. Virus Lugig is the same as Virus Toad from the original game but instead of mashing space you need to buy a cherry bomb. And for Red Bass. You need to plant a bomb plant and what side he is gonna enter so he runs into it. Besides that the rest is the same besides it being, well, plants vs zombies. It also has the night shift where you need to blow the entire place up and it ends with an escape segment. Instead of there being the factory there is a completely new mode. Switched in red house. This is a mini recreation of switched in time and it's very hard. Maybe it was a bit too hard. It is a really fun mode I really enjoyed so yeah. Also I beat it pre-patch because I have no life. Also this mode is part of the end game quest for this game. It's actually really good but I wouldn't say I like it as much as the original. This game also has achievements meaning more replayability. Speaking of replayability I should mention that this game has a truckload of content. Such as an actually playable version of the memory arcade or there being a hand drawn version of Cabin Fever Chapter 2. Despite this game being really challenging it is still super well balanced. This game also doesn't go to 201% completion and rather it goes to 123% completion because yes. The only thing I wish this game has was a custom game but that's it. This game is just a plain masterpiece. The gameplay is really fun. The visuals are absolutely amazing. The game has a banger soundtrack. The balancing and difficulty is perfect. This game has lots of bonus content that's actually fun to do. This game is really funny. And this game has its own personality and feel to it. This game is perfect in every way and with all of that in mind I consider this to be. The best fan made 5 nights at Wario's game. Ever. This video is way longer than I thought it was going to be. I hope you enjoyed this and as always have an amazing day and I'll be back. Eventually. Okay bye.